Hello, everybody. My name is Max Kern. I'm from Stony Brook. I'm here to present, present today on FSONet, a wireless backhaul for multi-gigabit Pico cells using steerable free space optics. So first, um, in recent years, mobile data consumption has been increasing, and it's believed to continue so up to potentially a thousand-fold increase. So um, to handle this, uh, a common research solution is to use Pico cells. So Pico cells use um, the millimeter wave band um, to provide uh, one to two gigabits um, uh, bandwidth at about a hundred uh, meter range. So an important part of a PicoCell network, um, a full deployment, would be the backhaul network. So basically this network would take the, the data from the PicoCells and deliver it to a gateway and then to the internet. Um, based on the, the bandwidth requirements, uh, uh, optical fibers is a good solution. However, in this outdoor um, deployment scenario for the Pico cells, uh, optical fibers would be prohibitively expensive. Uh, so a wireless solution is greatly preferred. Uh, so we believe that free space optics uh, can provide the needed bandwidth at the needed uh, ranges for, uh, such a net for such a backhaul network. So um, links in this backhaul network would need to provide uh, 10, up to 10, or at minimum 10 gigabits per second, potentially more, say 40 or even 100 gigabits per second, uh, at ranges of 100 to 500 meters. So other of those wireless solutions uh, aren't really capable of doing that. So RF-based solutions can really only provide uh, one to two gigabits at uh, 100 meters. Uh, same with other RF-based solutions. They can't provide 10 gigabits per second at uh, a few hundred meters. Uh, there are some uh, research into using MIMO to provide that, but um, at these frequencies, it'd be extremely challenging. So free space optics can provide um, 10 gigabits per second very easily, and potentially even 40, 100, or even terabits per second, um, because they, they use the same technology as optical fibers uh, to transmit data. Um, so there are problems with uh, at using free space optics in an outdoor, um, in an outdoor scenario, however, Several, most of these challenges can be overcome in uh, the specific PicoCell backhaul network. So free space optics um, is a wireless communication technology using infrared light um, with wavelengths between 1550 nanometers and 800 nanometers. Uh, so this spectrum is unlicensed. Um, there's, it does require line of sight, uh, but there are eye safety concerns. Uh, however, these, uh, aren't that stringent and aren't that hard to meet. Uh, free space objects use a narrow beam um, of only a few centimeters in diameter. Uh, this means that we have very small uh, angular tolerances and uh, translation tolerances for both the receiver and transmitter. Um, but we also, and we also have near minimum divergence so we can tra uh, transmit up to even several kilometers using free space optics. Uh, there's there are some commercially available free space optics uh, transceivers. These are generally focused on uh, providing a few gigabits per second up to se at several kilometers. Um, you can also develop, um, we have developed SFP-based prototypes uh, for our work. Um, and again, they can provide um, very easily 10 gigabits per second and potentially even 40 or 100 gigabits per second. So uh, because of uh, the, the spectrum that free space ops uses, there are some challenges when we go to an outdoor environment. And so these four uh, challenges are weather, uh, building movement, uh, turbulence, and transient obstacles. So with weather, um, we can see a t signal attenuation. For rain and snow, that's only up to 40 dB per kilometer. However, for fog, it's much worse. Uh, so for dense fog, which has a visibility of 40 meters, uh, that can be as high as 250 dB, dB per kilometer. Um, and so this signal attenuation can render uh, links very uh, non-operational. Non so we also have problems with building movement. Uh, so the, our free space optic links only have a t angular tolerance of a few of a few milliradians per second, actually less than that, say about 0 0.2, 0 0.1 milliradians per second. So uh, buildings can rotate up to 10 milliradians per second. And so this, this small, relatively small mutation can cause enough misalignment to render uh, free space optic links uh, non-operational. There's also issues with turbulence. Uh, this happens because of uh, different different conditions in the air. Uh, this can cause beam wander, beam threading, and scintillation. However, these effects are minimal for lengths less than 500 meters. 
We also have uh, issues with transient obstacles such as birds. Uh, because our links require line of sight, any blockages can uh, stop the, the link. So in our PicoCell backhaul network, we can solve many of these challenges by limiting uh, what our network can do. Uh, so for weather, we can easily handle this by shortening the length of our links because any weather effects uh, are determined, the attenuation is basically per kilometer. So if we use shorter, um, shorter links, we can, uh, we will have less attenuation overall. So for our prototypes, we uh, have enough margin to actually support 100 meter links in dense fog. Um, for building movement, we can handle this by actually having an active tracking and pointing system that um, realigns the link with um, any building movement that occurs. For turbulence, we limit the, the maximum length of any link in our network to 500 meters. And then finally, for transient obstacles, we can either retransmit uh, traffic once the obstacle is gone, or we can actually uh, reroute the traffic. Uh, and so we actually um, embed redundancy into our networks to allow us to do this. So based on these things, we propose FSONet. The key idea here is that we have a two-tier network. So these two tiers, uh, we have one which is a reliable but low capacity network that can handle any weather effects or most weather effects. And then we have a less reliable but hi much higher capacity network. So this is a network that we can use in absence of any weather effects. Um, and so we use uh, steerable FSOs. This allows us to uh, reconfigure the network and actually switch between these two tiers of network as necessary. And it also allows us to reduce the number of interfaces because we can actually change uh, which links are active and to best suit the given traffic. So over in this diagram here on the left, we have our full network. So this is um, all potential links. Because we're using steerable FSOs, not all of those can be used at once. Uh, and so we have our Pico cells and gateways. And so our goal is basically to connect the Pico cells to the gateway at any given time. So in the presence of weather, what we would do is we use our, our uh, backbone network. So this network is made up of links entirely that are less than 100 meters. And this gives us enough margin to actually um, transmit w during the fog. Uh, we don't have to worry about the attenuation. We still have enough received power. So when the fog goes away, what we can do is we can actually reconfigure the network to a much higher capacity network. And so uh, FSONet, we can reconfigure based on the traffic. So this isn't the only uh, full high capacity network. We can actually use uh, any combination uh, which we can determine at runtime based on the given traffic. And so how we um, ensure that these 100 meter links can handle fog is we actually um, al allocate a certain part of the link margin or the link budget. So this budget is simply just the transmit power minus the list reverse set sensitivity. And so these two, um, uh, the geometric loss and movement tolerance in green, these are dictated by the actual, um, uh, this is determined by the length of the link. So these geometric losses uh, account for things like um, our beam size being too big and not falling completely on the collimator. Also for uh, during, even with our tracking system, we do still see some you know, missile, uh, minor misalignments that will cause power loss. And so for short links, we only need to allocate 10 to 15 dB. This allows us to allocate the rest to overcome uh, fog and rain and snow. And then for longer links, we have to allocate more uh, for geometric losses and um, for movement tolerances because the, the tolerances at longer lengths are much less. And then we also uh, need to allocate just um, some power for uh, scintillation and turbulence effects. So now I'm gonna talk about three major components of FSONet. Uh, first is our tracking and pointing system, which we use to keep our link aligned during building movement. Then uh, our network design algorithm, and then finally our network reconfiguration algorithm. Uh, so first, I'll talk about the tracking and pointing system. So the goal of the tracking and pointing system is to keep the, the FSO link aligned while um, there's building movement. So we do this uh, in two stages. So we, or, so we place uh, four photodiodes around our receiver lens. And so uh, one to the right, left, above, and below. Uh, so these di photodiodes will give us a voltage based on how much light hits them. And so our beam itself is Gaussian. Uh, has a Gaussian profile, meaning in the middle it's highest, and then as you go out, it slowly goes to a tail. So when the beam is perfectly aligned, we expect to get about the same voltage. Um, then if a building cause, if there's a rotation of the, the transmitter, what will happen is the photodiode uh, close to where the beam moved to will go up in power, the ones away from it will go down. 
Uh, this is how we do our tracking. We can determine based on the actual voltages how far the beam has moved. Um, our studio boat FSOs are equipped with a galvo mirror, which is a small rotatable mirror that we can precisely control. So based on the feedback from our tracking stage, we can actually point the beam back at the uh, receiver. And so we set up a uh, prototype of this um, in the basement of a building at Stony Brook uh, at 100 meters. So over on the right, we have our receiver FSO. Uh, in the center is the collimating lens, and then you can see the photodiodes, uh, which are those small black boxes. And then we have our transmitter FSO over here with the galvan mirror and uh, collimating lens. Uh, so we place our transmitter FSO on a rotational stage, uh, which is that black box on the bottom. With that, we could actually simulate uh, building movements up um, from 1 to 20 milliradians per second. So we evaluated this setup by running a throughput test with the tracking system uh, enabled and the rotational stage moving. And so we found that for up to 15 milliradians per second, we still get um, the same throughput as a static link. And so we see some degradation once we go to 20 and uh, 17 and a half milliradians per second but we still get a pretty high throughput there. Um, for longer links, we were unable to actually set up our prototype. So what we did is we used um, optical simulation software called ZMAX. And so what we did was determine the angular tolerance for um, varying different distances of uh, links. And so for 100 meters, our angular tolerance is 0 0.22 milliradians. And for uh, 500 meters, it's about 0.1 milliradians. So based on this, our tracking should work at a, between five to seven and a half milliradians per second for a 500 meter link. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the network design uh, algorithm for FSONet. So basically, um, we need to design our uh, network. So we need to choose the Pico cells and we need to choose um, what FSO links to include. And so we constrain the number of uh, the Pico cells that we can choose and also the number of FSOs per node. And so we're trying to uh, optimize the average network flow for, uh, for varying traffic patterns. So we de developed a four-step heuristic to do this. So, in, um, so we, we start with, we're given a bunch of uh, Pico cell locations and the gateways, and our goal is to basically choose a subset of these Pico cells and connect them to the gateways. So in our first step, we use a um, greedy set cover algorithm to actually choose um, some Pico cells that will cover the entire given area. Um, uh, in our next step, we use a Steiner forest algorithm uh, to connect these chosen um, Pico cells to the gateways. In this step, we also limit the, link, the links that we're using to at most 100 meters in length. Uh, so we're basically guaranteed at this point to have a backbone network that can withstand fog. Um, and so in addition to this, we also have to be um, uh, cognizant of line of sight, uh, line of sight requirements. Uh, this does require us to choose additional Pico cells uh, to add to the network in this step. In our third step, we, um, we swap edges um, over here on the right, you can see we actually swap this edge for another one. This minimizes the node degree and um, allows us to use um, less FSOs in the, for that node. Uh, so at this point, we now have our static backbone network. And so then what we do is we augment this with extra, uh, picos, or extra nodes and edges to basically improve, improve the capacity. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the, the reconfiguration algorithm. So, um, when a, tra a traffic flow arrives uh, in FSONet, we have the option to actually reconfigure the network to best handle that flow. Uh, so because the, the network itself is sparse, we rather uh, not re reconfigure unless uh, absolutely necessary. So when a new flow arrives, what we first do is try and route it using current um, rules. If that uh, isn't able to satisfy the bandwidth demand of the flow, we then try and create a multi-path route. And then finally, if necessary, we, we reconfigure the network. Uh, by reconfiguring the network, we can uh, run into problems such as um, black holes uh, and unbound latency. However, in our previous work, uh, Firefly, which was a free space optics based data center network, we handled all these flows and the same techniques can be applied to FSONet. Uh, to evaluate uh, FSONet, we um, ran two different types of simulations uh, or two types of tests. Uh, offline tests where we generated the network and evaluated our objective function and online text where we ran uh, traffic simulation <coughs> and compared uh, different reconfiguration algorithms. And so we did this for uh, 14 cities in the US, so we obtained uh, building, 2D building uh, plans for the cities. Um, 
And then we assumed that our FSOs were lower than any of those buildings. Um, yes. okay. So our offline results, we basically generated networks and we uh, observed, say, the size um, and how well they did. So uh, for 14 cities, uh, the size of their backbone network was between 58 nodes and 752 nodes. Um, but if you compare that to the, the minimum number of Pico cells needed to cover an area, we only needed two to three and a half times more nodes than is absolutely minimal to actually cover that area. So by enforcing our backbone constraint, we're only adding two to three and a half times uh, more. We only need two to half t more uh, nodes than if you could, um, yeah, than if you just wanted to cover the area. Uh, so then these bottom two numbers, uh, we compare the objective of our of FSO net to a static variant where we use uh, non-steerable FSOs. Uh, and so our and so FSO net, which has steerable FSOs, does one and a half to two and a half times better. So the dynamic, the dynamic network actually helps a lot. And then we compare this to with a trivial upper bound. And so FSO the ratio of FSO net to that trivial upper bound was between a half and 0.7. So then for our online test, what we did is we ran uh, traffic simulations. Uh, we compared this with a few different reconfiguration algorithms. Um, GL is a global optimal solution, um, solution, which is infeasible to actually deploy because of the number of updates it would require. Uh, INC, which is our incremental uh, approach, which I discussed earlier. And then we also, um, so in our incremental approach, we apply uh, to each flow. And we, we used a batch um, algorithm, which basically wait until we have uh, end flows and then apply our reconfiguration algorithm. And so um, these blue bars are in blue are dynamic networks, and these the red, two red ones are uh, static, and then these lighter ones are global optimal. And so uh, our reconfiguration algorithms do, do pretty close to the optimal, and we also do better than the optimal for static networks. Okay. So in conclusion, um, FSONet is a, a um, backhaul network that can provide uh, for backhaul network for multi-gigabit uh, Pico cells. And so the key idea here is, again, to switch between our backbone network that can withstand uh, weather effects and everything else and, be, and a higher capacity network when possible. And so our future work is to see if we can actually design uh, this network with specific weather conditions in mind. And we also want to see if we can expand from, say, a two-tier network to a multi-tier network that can, take it, that can uh, provide more consistent uh, quality of coverage. Okay, thank you for your time. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you.